Welcome, my name is Randy Davis, and I'm with the Megaphone, but I am just the Megaphone. Today we are going to talk about exactly how we are made like the image of our Heavenly Father. Because in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, it says, Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. Well, right there it says, let us make man in our image. And then it said, so God created man in his own image. So we're looking at something, which is God. And God is, at the same time, something that is multiple and singular. Well, honestly, that's where we get uh, the Trinity, triune. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. In John chapter 1, verse 1, it said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Well, in John chapter 1, verse 14, it explains that the Word of God was made in the flesh in the and he dwelt among us and that was jesus christ if you look at genesis well basically the first three verses in the entire bible we can honestly see god the father god the son and god the holy spirit right there because god speaks and he says let there be light and that's the word of god that you know that comes out let there be light well uh, John uh, chapter 1 verse 14 tells us the word became flesh and, and dwelt among us and that was Jesus Christ and the word was God and the word was with God at the same time and that was in John chapter 1 verse 1 so the word uh, uh, with Jesus Christ and God God the Father being one and the same and in the second verse of Genesis chapter 1 it says that the spirit of God hovers over the water it's hovering over the waters well that's the holy spirit so that's where we get god the father god the son and god the holy spirit that's three parts and honestly we are made just like that so let's take a look at first thessalonians chapter 5 verse 23 it says now may the god of peace himself sanctify you completely and may your whole spirit soul and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Right there. Your whole spirit, soul, and body. Well, in Hebrews, by the way, I am uh, teaching out of the uh, New King James Version, by the way. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, it says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the vision of soul and spirit. That word soul right there, that comes from a Greek word that says, uh, excuse me, that is psyche. And psyche means, in, in the Greek, it means the mind, the will, and the emotions. So basically, we are body, will, and spirit. Well, a lot of people, talk, when he talks about God the Father, they, the, they say things like, I want to I follow the will of God, the will of God, the will of God. Well, that's like us having a will, which is a soul. And the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. And honestly, Jesus Christ being God in the flesh. So we are flesh like Jesus Christ. We are will, a mind, will, and emotion, okay? And we are spirit, just like God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. So we are earnestly made in the image of God being a three-part being. Now. We don't have any evidence anywhere in, in, in the Bible where it talks about, you know, other, you know, creatures, other entities, excuse me, other beings, you know, that, that's a three-part being. Us as human beings, uh, we are a three-part being just like God Almighty, just like our Father in heaven. Now, we're going to be talking about, you know, a little bit of the functions of all three and how they connect and how they interact. And we're going we're gonna to be reading out of, Romans chapter 8, starting at verse 1, and we're going to read first through verse 11. There is therefore no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. No condemnation? 
uh, there, uh, there is therefore now no condemnation. Well, what that actually means is when you are in Christ Jesus, you're not perfect. You are just forgiven. Therefore, you're not going to be condemned. You're not going to be condemned uh, for your petty little faults here, uh, here and there, for your sinful actions here and there. Instead, you have the ability to come to God and to ask for forgiveness. So that's why it says, there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. Now, if we read Romans chapter 3, verse 23. No, I mean, excuse me, Romans chapter 6, verse 23. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. So for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And, and salvation being saved basically means freedom and safety from the wages of the sin, uh, which is in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. So that's basically what it's talking about. But what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh. God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh on account of sin. He uh, condemned sin in the flesh. Basically, Jesus Christ died uh, for our wages. And you can read about that uh, a little bit more in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, where it says, He who was God himself made him who was Jesus Christ, still being one of the same, though, by the way, so he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us us and that's what it's talking about basically is jesus christ died on the cross uh, for our sins for our wages of our sins that the righteousness requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who do not walk according to the flesh but according to the spirit for those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh there's flesh and there's mind which is flesh and soul but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, for to be carnally minded is death. That word carnally, if you think about the word carnivore, which is meat eater, a flesh eater, carnally means basically uh, fleshly minded. So carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace because the carnal mind is an entity against God, basically opposing against God, very opposed and against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So then those who are in the flesh cannot please God. So there you have it. We have, I got no cards, by the way, uh, to illustrate a little bit better. So it's talking about to be carnally minded is death. Your mind Picture this as your mind, will, emotion, your soul. To be carnally minded or carnally soulish is death. But to be spiritually minded is life in peace. To be walking in the spirit is life in peace. So how do we get there? Well, I'll answer that question in just a minute. Let's continue on in verse 9. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If indeed the spirit of God dwells in you. Now, if anyone does not have the spirit of Christ, he is not his. And if Christ is in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Now look at the cards, okay? This right here is representing your spirit with the Holy Spirit connected to it, okay? communicating to it, okay? Communic excuse me, communicating with it. Now, that right there is basically uh, illustrating the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God dwelling in you. Being in Christ Jesus, you're going to have the Holy Spirit dwelling in you. And what does it do? The Holy Spirit communicates with your spirit. And if you're spiritually minded with the Holy Spirit, you know, because the Holy Spirit, it, it, it guides you. It, it, it can, you know, it, it helps you to, to reevaluate yourself and to see how you can improve and be more and more and more 
like God, like Christ. Uh, Christ being 100% God and 100% human, by the way. So you being a human being, you can honestly be more and more and more just like Christ Jesus and walking more and more and more in the will of God uh, with the Holy Spirit actually helping you walk that straight and narrow path, communicating uh, uh, to your spirit. And the Bible calls that a still, small voice. So you'll hear that still, small voice, and that still, small voice, you know, will kind of, I wouldn't say lecture you, uh, but basically, you know, will basically guide you and tell you, say, hey, look, you're better than that. You're a child of the king now. And you don't have to walk in the flesh anymore. Jesus Christ even fought his flesh. Very, very, you know, uh, very, very, I would say, I wouldn't say harshly. Uh, by the way, you, you can read about that a little bit more uh, and talking about in the Garden of Gethsemane. You can find that in Matthew 26, I believe. That might be Matthew 24, but I'm pretty sure it's Matthew 26. And in Luke 22, by the way, it's talking about how Jesus Christ is fighting against his flesh so much that he ended up going to the Father in prayer. And he prayed so earnestly that he started having droplets of blood coming out of his sweat glands, you know? And that's an honest-to-God, true medical uh, condition. You can look it up. I looked it up myself. It's rare, and it happens basically when you're under a lot of stress. So Jesus Christ being under a lot of stress, and the Bible said that he was scared to death, by the way. Why? Because his fleshly body knew being 100% God, Jesus Christ being 100% God, he knew uh, that he was about to experience th this brutal torture and being killed and nailed to the cross. So his flesh was scared to death because his flesh knew that it was going to die soon. So in the Garden of Gethsemane, Jesus Christ prayed, and he ended up getting a, a, an angel sent down to him to minister to him. But anyways, that's beside the point. Don't let me digress. Let's continue on. And we're going to go to now, we're going to move down to Romans chapter 8, verses 12, and read through verse 17. It says, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh, for if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For as many as, uh, as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. By the way, in 1 John 4, 8, it teaches us, that there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has to do with torment, or it, another version might say with punishment. Uh, there's no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. He that fear is not made perfect in love. So basically, if you are complete in the love of God, you will not fear, not fear even death itself. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear is what it says but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. That word Abba basically is an intimate term that basically means daddy. So we're looking at daddy, father. The spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So the spirit itself bears witness with our spirit is what it says. So that's what this card right here is illustrating. You being born again and in Christ Jesus, you'll have the Holy Spirit inside of you bearing witness to our spirit. And if children, uh, because when we're born again, we are adopted children of, of, of our heavenly father. We're adopted back into his family. Now, God did say that he knew us before we were in our mother's womb. So he knew this before we were even conceived. We were spiritual beings up there in heaven. And all God Almighty wants us to do, honestly, is just come back to him to live with him so that he can love us forever and ever. And we can be surrounded in his love and we can love him back. So it says, the spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then joint heirs of God and, uh, excuse me, and, and then heirs of heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ. 
I mean, don't that sound wonderful? Being joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is heir to the throne of God. And when you're there, when you're a child of God, you are joint heirs with Jesus Christ. You know, uh, being able to live, you know, free of fear, honestly, because Paul himself, Paul himself said, to die is gain. If you are in Christ Jesus, to die is gain. Why? Because as soon as you die, you are up there in heaven for all eternal, uh, forever and ever, being surrounded and wrapped up in God's love, you know, experiencing the full glory of God forever and ever. Now, isn't that wonderful? No tears, no more temptations of sin, no more, no more bills, no more hot, wet, hot human weather where you're sweating, you know? I mean, just honestly, forever and ever experiencing the comfort and love and joy of our Father in heaven. Now, how do we get there? Honestly, how do we get there? Well, um, let me back up just a little bit, okay? Now, in, uh, in verse 6, it's talking about to be carnally minded is death, okay? But to be spiritually minded, excuse me, to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life. And we can honestly be more and more and more spiritually minded. How? Spiritually soulish? How? Well, if we are, are born again, we will have the Holy Spirit inside of us, and it'll continue pulling us in that direction, okay? So we have a choice. We can either be fleshly minded and follow through with the temptations of the flesh, or we can be spiritually minded. Our will will start, will start automatically. The more, the more we put it into practice with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, being a child of the King, the more we put that into practice, the easier it is to push desires of our flesh away so that eventually we are, uh, we are walking at, uh, in the spirit and just constantly, you know, uh, constantly, basically, Paul himself said that he dies every day. He basically killing your flesh every day. So eventually that becomes easier and easier. And, and eventually, we're just basically spiritual walking in the spirit, just obeying the, the will of our Father. I mean, isn't that awesome? I mean, come on, you know? I mean, I would rather die being, you know, being walking in the spirit with the Holy Spirit inside of me, being a child of King, die, and then being up there with God Almighty, surrounded in his love, instead of, instead of, embracing the temptations and desires of the flesh, pushing God away, pushing his truth away, pushing uh, his son, Jesus Christ, away, instead doing what we want. That's not what God wants for us. Because that right there, if we do that, guess what? We're going to have to, if we die, we're going to have to eventually experience what's called the second death. And that's what it means in, in Romans chapter 6, verse 23. For the wages of sin of death. And that's something you have to work for, by the way. That's what a wage is. When you work, you get paid. That's called your wage. But the gift of God, that word gift, you know, tells us that it's free. It's free. You don't have to work for it. It's freely given. How do you get it? Well, you just have to have faith, believe it or not, and admit that faith out of your mouth. And let's look at that real quick. Let's read about that. How do we get there so that we are a child of the king? And, and, and when we're a child of the king, we know. We don't have to fear death anymore because we know if we die, it is gain. Because we are, it, the word of God tells us that, uh, that once to die and then the judgment. Okay, so as soon as you die, you are in the presence of our, of our father, of our heavenly father. Well, let's look at John chapter 14, verse, excuse me, John chapter 14, verse 6 real quick. It says, Jesus said to him, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So Jesus is saying he is the only way. And remember, Jesus Christ is the very word, the very word of God. Okay, I asked, uh, I've been talking to my, uh, my kids, uh, by the way, about a bunch of things in the Bible. Today, I asked my daughter, Ashley, 
you know, about how Jesus Christ was the way. And, and, and the way I illustrated it, because we've been to Florida, by the way. I asked her, I said, what's the way to Florida? And she said, well, first you got to drive through Georgia. Well, um, Jesus Christ said that he is the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father but, but through me. So Jesus Christ, you know, going through him, he is the way to the Father, and he is the word in the flesh. So you can kind of illustrate that, you know, thinking about that as Jesus Christ being the walking word. He is like a walking Bible. And here I have a Bible in my hand, and this is the word of God written. And when you go to church, you hear the word of God spoken. And when you hear the word of God spoken, faith comes. Okay, when you receive that truth and you're hearing it and you receive that and accept it as truth, faith is born inside of you. And when you have faith in Jesus Christ, well, let's look at Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 13 real quick. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. But with the heart, one believes unto righteousness. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. The word salvation means freedom and safety from the wages of sin, by the way. For the scripture says, whoever believes in him will not be put to stain. For there is no distinction between Greek and Jew. For the same Lord over all is rich to all he call upon him. For whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So there you have it, you know. You hear the word, you accept it as truth, you gain faith in Jesus Christ, and you just admit that faith out of your mouth, and then boom, you are a child of the king. And being a child of the king, you, have, you, you honestly have the right to uh, be, you know, joint heirs with Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is heir to the throne. And it says, but there's no distinction between Jew and Greek. And John 3, 16 tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, his only begotten son. By the way, that's Jesus Christ. So that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Well, we can choose. We can choose to embrace Jesus Christ and have that everlasting life with God Almighty or experience what the word of God calls the second death which is hell, which is permanent separation from God. Now, in the Garden of Eden, that's how we got separated from God, in the Garden of Eden, that first moral choice. Now, I have, I have, a, I have a video on that, by the way, and it's actually talking about our choices, uh, but you, you, can, you can look at that, check out my videos, and you can, and you can learn a little bit more about, about choices and about the Garden of Eden, but let me not digress. So in the Garden of Eden, that first moral choice, honestly, humans that completely failed it okay god said hey look you know if you eat at that bible uh, excuse me at that at that fruit I, I was gonna say apple but it's it's we're not gonna talk about what kind of fruit it is when he took a bite of that fruit you know the serpent said hey you're not gonna surely die but god said yes you will and guess what we now experience a physical death and if we sin against god and push god away and never accept you know jesus christ his son guess what when you die, you're going to have to face the judgment. And, and, and after the judgment, you're going to have to experience, if you're not in Christ Jesus, if you don't have the Holy Spirit living inside of you, you're going to have to experience something that's called the second death, which is permanent separation. Now, God said himself, okay, if you read the Bible in, in Romans chapter 1, okay, that's Paul writing, by the way, but it's, it's been given as inspiration of God. But anyways, but the Bible teaches us in Romans chapter 1, that, you know, if we want to make up our own mind and push God away, God will give us up to that mind, that, that mindset that we have, and God will just leave us alone. Now, I honestly have been in that dark time in my life where I pushed God away myself, and we won't get into that story. Um, that's basically for another time. But anyways, that's beside the point. Um, so I pushed God away, and I experienced, you know, being separated from God. I mean, I would pray and pray and pray and talk to God, but I didn't hear God, okay? Um, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, by the way. 
Anyways, let us continue. So all we have to do is hear the word of God, okay, and accept the word of God honestly as truth. And then that's how we get faith. That's where faith is born. And faith, it's not about a belief system. Honestly, John 3, 16 does say, for whosoever believeth. But that word believeth, is, is, it means a little bit more than just believing in him. Now, the Amplified Bible, you know, uh, breaks it down to um, trust in, endure in, and rely on him. Okay? So faith is basically a belief system so strong, okay, is that you don't really believe it anymore. You have faith in it. You know that you know that you know that you know. Period. And no one else could tell you any different. And, and when you get there, you know, and you feel that faith and, and you experience faith in Jesus Christ, just admit it out your mouth and say, God, I know Jesus Christ exists. I have faith in Jesus Christ. And I believe in your son, Jesus Christ. And I believe that he was raised from the dead. And I want Jesus Christ to be my personal Lord and Savior. And then there you go. Boom. You're washed clean in your sins. Okay, by the blood, by the uh, by, by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, you're washed clean in your sins. Why? Because Jesus Christ died on the cross for those wages of sin, which is death. And then you will receive that free gift, something you don't have to work for, that free gift of eternal life. If you do that, you know, and you come to Christ and you walk out the door and all of a sudden someone runs you over and kills you, guess what? You have nothing to worry about. Because you'll be going to be living tear-free, worry-free, bill-free, humidity and heat-free with God and his love being joint heirs with Jesus Christ himself. Now, that's honestly all I've got for tonight, okay? And I, I hope that y'all have received something because let me tell you, it certainly is a blessing you know, uh, to me, every time God gives me an opportunity to uh, to preach his word and, and to share his word, every time I see those opportunities, I feel so blessed that God gives me those opportunities because, honestly, not a whole lot more things will give me, uh, give me so much joy like spreading the love of God, spreading the word of God, spreading Christ Jesus and teaching, you know, Christ Jesus and preaching Christ Jesus and empowering people, you know, with the word of God, because when they hear the word of God, faith comes and it empowers them to be in Christ Jesus. And, and the word of God empowers us to change and to walk that straight and narrow path, just like the way Christ Jesus did, because he knew no sin. Friends, that's all God, you know, uh, has for me to give y'all in this video. And once again, I really hope that y'all have received something. I really hope that, you know, y'all have received truth. And if this is the first time that y'all have, have experienced faith in Jesus Christ, I encourage you, just pray up to God and admit with your mouth, say, God Almighty, I believe. I believe and I have faith in Jesus Christ, and I want him to be my Lord and Savior. And I admit with my mouth, God, that you raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And then that's it. And with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Salvation meaning freedom and safety from the wages of sin, which is death. Now, goodbye and Godspeed.